Hello, welcome Hello. to Mental Health. Uh, we're here with a round two. Round two, second time this guy's been up here. It's King. Se se second round knockouts. You know. Second round knockout. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I know you you didn't uh, play bass on this one, but I haven't found any of your era Gorgoroth in the wild in the stores, right? But I found that one, so I picked that up. Um, uh, I had that one for the last interview, and uh, I went home to my hometown and went through my CDs, and I found the the I CD up there. So I was like, I had to bring that back for for the second interview. Yeah, that's a that's a fun record between two worlds. Yeah, um, yeah, I I really enjoy it. Yeah, that came out in 2006, so that is actually 14, 15 years ago now, you know? Yeah, scary. Time flies. Time flies. Actually, I actually didn't buy it. Um, in active addiction, this guy got into my car, and uh, we went out and did some things, and he left the CD there, and then I just reaped the benefits, and, you know, active addiction, I didn't give it back. All right. Right. Oh, that 2006 was a crazy year. I think I released four or five albums that year. You know, you know, 2006, I record uh, Between Two Worlds, Gorgoroth of Majorum, Satanus Glorium, and then uh, we released Sog, number one, and uh, Jotun Spor, I did a, you know, a black metal record with uh, Kvitraften, was the drummer in Gorgoroth, and now he's doing his Vardruna band, or, yeah, solo, or... Is his project. So that list is for maybe Older Horn too. It's like it was four or five records in 2006 this year. Oh, yeah, that, mm -hmm. that would be busy, right? Wow. Mm -hmm. You're probably more records than Drake at that point. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, uh, I, I always like talking to you. This is always fun. Um, our mutual friend says he misses you. Oh, Jason Rouse? That, that's right. That's right. He's in Texas now. So. Yeah, I talked to him the other day. You know, he was uh, he moved from Canada to to Austin, right? And yeah, he's in uh, Austin now. Yeah. yeah, everyone is fleeing California. Yeah, like everybody is leaving the big cities now, moving to Texas and Florida, and you know, I mean, I, he actually sent me these uh, videos outside of his uh, apartment. Long, long queues, you know, with uh, with people trying to buy houses, and you know, they're really fleeing over there. I, yeah, it's pretty scary. Like, if I had something, I'd go somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, um, okay, so um, have you ever seen the movie Losing Isaiah? Nope. It, uh, it's about um, this black woman that was a crackhead and had a baby, right? Played by Holly Berry, right? And then mm -hmm. these, uh, then these, uh, this, older this white couple so then they, they adopted the black baby and then later on the mom gets clean and tries to get the baby back and then the whole movie is about the whole court and like who's going to get custody of this baby i mean the people who are raising him his whole life or the mom who now wants custody back from her baby even though she's been neglecting it for a long time and uh, I'm pretty sure you were in a similar similar situation, weren't you? Yeah, I've been around. Right? With, with, I've been uh, around. I was talking about Gorgoroth, right? Because you, you got to try to get um, get the rights. Oh, from. the oh the courts court yeah. system. Yeah. No. The, oof, that's many years ago. But uh, in in short, th three 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 egos the size of. Mon Manhattan or something, you know what I mean? Uh, huge egos together. So, uh, yeah, didn't work too well. Yeah. For a while there, apparently. I, I just, I, it kind of, to me, it just it seems like that movie Losing Isaiah, because like you and Gull were taking care of the child for all those years, but you know, just because it didn't come out of your vagina, I guess. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's like with two different bands of when I started World Growth. Yeah. Uh, it's like a new band forming for me, you know, Gaul started at the same time and we started like making, making music over time there. But yeah, to be honest, I rather have done that period. It's got way more stress, you know, when we started that, we, uh, I don't think we, we knew what we were starting, you know, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. It was a little bit like you 
fuck it, we have spent so much time and this, you know, or basically it was gall. He said, I remember he said, like, okay, I'm, I'm out, but I, I can't work with this guy anymore, you know, but uh, I don't know. No. I think well, we, hey, all, we got God I, I, I think we all, all have uh, had a little bit of difficult personalities, you know, but yeah. Plus I, we're I, on the road having fun all the time and then uh, like uh, with... I think, I think it worked out very well for all of us afterwards, you know, he has, he has done a couple of good core growth albums and, you know, I've done that about God Seed and, you know, God's Weird and, yeah, Why Did You Know? And, yeah, and that's yeah. the important part that it works out in the end, yeah. Yeah, so it came out like lots of uh, other projects out of it, you know. So fair enough. Yeah. So long time ago. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so uh, w what's life like in um, in like um, Oslo right now with everything going on? In Oslo, I live in Bergen. Oh, okay, so yeah, either way, it's it's. it's I'm on the west coast. Yeah. Now the, it's been raining and uh, yeah. Let's talk about the weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about the weather. That's what everyone here wants to know about. What yeah. was the weather like? How is the weather, Mr. Yeah. P? Yeah. Who's controlling the weather? How about that, right? <laughs> Hard I think about New Gates. <laughs> well, yeah, he just bought all the farmland in uh, in the States. So you, you, you know, if you think about it, like in the beginning, it was like these greater gods, maybe, you know, the sun or like whatever they were worship, worshiping, you know, controlling the weather. And it ends up to the real answer is Bill Gates. Yeah, you know? that whole what time. Mean, yeah. So uh, in the last six months or so, have you been able to do much with music right now? Yeah, I'm doing this uh, multimedia project, transmedia they call it. But it's, uh, you know, we are going to, to, to do different kind of arts. We are we're a group of... Uh, some artists and musicians and uh, you know people into different kinds of stuff so we are going to you know do uh, exhibitions and uh, music videos and you know music for tv and films and video games and yeah all kinds of cra crazy stuff but i need to go to detail on that later because it's not official yet but that's what i've been working on so over Easter now, we are uh, we are filming the first uh, music video for that. So it's uh... oh, that's very cool. Uh, speaking of music videos, I now work with uh, in Canada here. There was a VJ for Much Music, which was the channel that played all the music videos. Is uh, he was a sock puppet named Ed the Sock. He's starting his own music video channel, and I'm the metal VJ, so I get to pick all the music videos and write the throws and the jokes in between and. Uh, and and present the music videos we're looking for like uh smaller independent canadian bands to to get out there right now but um yeah so uh i'm pretty happy about that because like my life has just gotten really good in the last since i was talking to you actually yeah yeah, yeah. that's awesome yeah now it's uh more with more metal videos for the people right yeah right because like uh, we know mainstream media is, isn't gonna show it so yeah yeah I don't know what mainstream media is anymore. You know, this seems like everything is uh, fragmented a little bit. But you know, yeah, because like there's a whole generation of people that don't watch TV anymore. It's all just streaming and things now. So yeah. they're making their own TV channels and their own, you know, like yeah. they call it echo chambers or whatnot. You know, they are their own group of people. So they create their own media. Yeah, I don't know. So everybody lives in their own realities a little bit. I presume. Yeah, right. Because like, if uh, other people are pissing them off, they just cut them off and then uh, don't have to deal with them anymore. That's correct. Yeah, all right. Um, I've got an idea for a sketch that I'm gonna do. Um, I just um, I bought a forty dollar like black wool trench coat, and then I um, from from like a, a thrift store, and then I've bought over three hundred dollars worth of patches, like metal patches. I fit seven back patches on it, <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, I. Um, and I've been sewing it by hand. I've already got 20 hours of sewing time. So like, um, I figure I, I want to do a sketch about um, sewing uh, people's metal patches for them. And then and once- and Sewing is- Yeah, yeah. With hand sewing with the needle and thread. I, yeah, I did it all myself, right? Yep. 
Uh, so, the metal world has changed, you know, back in the day it was like hammers and nails and now we're knitting, you know what I mean? Well, so, yeah. I, I, I did going think of hammer. The <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, the world is turning female, right? Oh, well, I mean, yeah. we've both got the hair. Yeah, that's true. Right? Your interview, uh, the first one that we did, um, it was like my fifth interview ever. And uh, so, so I was pretty terrible. I'll, I'll admit that, you know. And uh, but it's also the better. second most popular uh, interview. That the I've biggest done. difference is I feel you're not drooling anymore. Yeah, uh, I was drooling. Wow, I'm joking. <laughs> I've drooled before. I drooled the other day when I was about to eat some Burger King. My buddy yeah. Mark made fun of me. <laughs> That's not what it is. All right. But um, yeah, that was the second most popular interview I've done so far. And like no one's promoted or anything. It's just people looking you up and then then finding the interview and watching it. So that's pretty cool. But yeah. um, so that was one reason why I wanted to come back and do a second a round two with you, because uh, the first one was quite terrible on my behalf. So I wanted to do a little better. Right. I like people apologizing. Yeah, I'm joking. Of course, I do. Oh well, yeah, when they when they fuck up, you know, uh, that's, that's a that's a that's a good characteristic being able to apologize. Some people can't do that. Yeah, that's true. All right, but uh, there was a couple of comments on on the last one. I'm just gonna go over. Uh, I, I I only I'm only gonna go over two. There was like 15 or so, but um, I just want you to know that um, uh, this one person, uh, I see Raven or whatever. Uh, thinks you're hot for being 45. Raven? Yeah, something Raven. Okay. They think that, I'm who Raven is. Well, yeah, well, it's the internet. There's lots of people, right? So I'm actually 46. You're 46 now, yeah. All right. But just to let you know, they think you're hot, right? And this other guy, his name was Human Garbage. All right? So Human yeah. Garbage says... Loves hearing from King, but this interviewer is fucking awful. Yeah, that's on you. Yeah, that was on me. That was on me, right? So well, I, it's, it's not really a question, is it? <laughs> uh, no, it's not, it's not a question. No, I was just letting you know what was going yeah. on. Um, but then I told him that um, it was my uh, like fifth interview ever, and check out a new one because I've gotten better. Yeah. Yeah, you speak flu fluently. Like, uh, it's funny, with only only my black metal uh, interviews, do I ever get down votes, like the thumbs down? Oh, I can do the, the say, com I forgot the I actually got this t-shirt from Forbidden Alchemy. Forbidden Alchemy. And it's uh, a very nice t-shirt. It's uh, cotton. It's a good cotton. Uh, yeah. It doesn't have arms. It's a t-shirt. Some people call it a t-shirt. <laughs> And uh, or yeah, t-shirt doesn't that sound? Yeah, it's a t-shirt because it makes a t. You know when make a t. Exactly. And the motive is like this. Yeah, all right. It looks cool. Yeah. It's got like was a moth on there. No, the thing is, uh, they sent me this uh, a couple of these awesome t-shirts, but uh, and they're you know what is uh, some promotion for for it, and I've forgotten about it. So <laughs> well, here it is. Yeah, there, there's the shirt right now. Everyone, yeah, look, look at the here it is. Forbidden all right. Alchemy. All right. Forbid yeah, but uh, that's the company, you know, all of them. All, okay. all of the t-shirts are Forbidden Alchemy. Very cool. So, uh, it's yeah. very cool. Yeah. It's brilliant. It's awesome. It's fantastic. Great. Very <laughs> nice. You're really selling it there, King. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. <well. laughs> I'm an interesting guy. <laughs> I, I I know. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, right. You've done right. some cool stuff, and you've been lots of places. So that's pretty awesome. You've, did, you've done no, more but, and been more places than the average folk. That's true. But right now, you know, with the lockdowns and everything, it seems uh, it seems like it's going to be be a while for for uh, concerts and everything. If you don't want to uh, vaccinate yourself or something. Yeah, yeah, they're basically just going to make you have to go underground and live in a sewer if you don't vaccinate yourself. Yeah. You're going to be the sewer people? I think I'm going underground with the mud monster, you know. Yeah, right? King of mud. Yeah, the moth monster? 
Your your only enemy is light. Hmm? Your only enemy is light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, but it's it's going that direction, isn't it? A little bit, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as we said, there's already people running away from California and everything, and uh, yeah, the world is looking pretty fucked up right now. Yeah, and we can't run anywhere. I guess you know. So where, where am I going to hide? You know, uh, yeah, like it's, it's, it's a little late now. Maybe if you could go back. to the left, I go to the left to the polar bears, and uh, you know, yeah, yeah. But that is basically what it is. You know, we are. Uh, it's not not much places to go here, so we pretty much locked down. It's uh, totally closed here now, so everything is shut down apparently. Oh wow. But, yeah, how is it where you live? Is that better? Toronto. Um, it's pre- it's locked down, right? But like um. Like, you can still go to work and everything. There's no Gestapo trying to stop you on the streets or anything. So that's a good thing. But, um, yeah, yeah, you're not, like, everything's shut down as far as anything fun. So right now, without Toronto opportunity, I'm just paying too much for rent. Oh, yeah. Right? Because, like, you move to Toronto to do things, and then without being able to do things, you're just paying that high price for no reason. I hear you. They just want us to go to work and come home. That's all we're allowed to do. Yeah, I think that is. Uh, I think that is a new new way. For, yeah, basically sit sit home, digital screens. But uh, yeah, but we were, have been smart. So that's like a little bit with this new project too. That I was talking about. You know, yeah. that's going to be called the ritual. Uh, so that is like every, everything we do in this project right now is based on uh, like. Digital, that it can be, we do everything digital, you know what I mean? Computer yep. games, music videos, like record music, but from different places, you know, but everything is, everything is set up without travel, so to speak, you know? Which basically was the business before, it's like musician traveling and playing concerts, right? Yeah. But if yeah. you think about it, when we started this business, it was like, okay, you could earn uh, your money on... Uh, you know, record sales, and then it's like t-shirts and all of that, you know, radio. All of this is gone, you know, it's like, think about it. You know, the concert, no, you don't earn money on CDs anymore, and you don't earn money on playing concerts, you know, so then it's merch, maybe, you know, t-shirts yeah. on the internet. You know, but, but even then, if you get signed to a label, they still want a cut of that stuff too. Exactly. So it's, uh, so it's, uh, it's rough times for the, the music industry in that sense, but so that's what we saw where this uh, direction was going a couple of years ago already. So we could like we started, we already knew that it was probably would be, be like this. So we started a little bit early. So yeah, like I, I hate people to just listen to Spotify. Like like it's important to buy the media, or otherwise you like what if your band would have to split point zero zero six of a cent every time someone listens to one of your songs, like, and then you gotta that that. yeah, that's how bad it is, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I, I see that too. It's uh, this, uh, when you get royalties and everything, it's, it's, uh, it's not much that comes from Spotify in these places, a little bit, maybe, but, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's sad, and uh, yeah. yeah I like, heard that, it was like uh, Lady Gaga, you know, this song, uh, I might be lying. I just heard it from someone, you know, about the Lady Gaga song, uh, "Poker Face." Yeah, that was cool. You know, a huge hit. It was, it was big back when it, in its time. Yeah, and I think she got paid like thousand dollars for royalties from Spotify. You know what I mean? Ah, wow, that's ridiculous. That, yeah. that, that, that song was huge, and people probably still listen to it all the time. And a thousand bucks. Woo! Yep. That's like a drop in the bucket for her too. So. Probably so. Yeah. So so this uh, this dig- as far as I understand this digital sales and everything is, you know what? I'm no concept. I just make the music. The world is changing so fast, you know, with the mediums and everything are like releasing. So yeah, but yeah. Uh, vinyl has come back in a big way though in the last few years. Like I'm pretty sure last year there was more vinyl sold than CDs or anything. So. That's something. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's coming yeah. back in a big way, right? Like. Yeah, it's like you know, you you get a better sound on records. You really do. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. 
for me, like uh, my uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, analog. Yeah, when I uh, my uh, what I say about it is like when you're listening to digital music, it's kind of like a squirt gun of music, you know, and it's like just squirting you. But like when it's analog, it's like you're swimming in the music. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Waves are you know instead of this digital sound waves, you know we always get this. You know, you get this. Uh... You're surrounded in it, right? So like, yeah, like you can definitely feel the difference when you listen to it analog. But um, yeah, I got, I've been loving the records. They have really helped me get clean too, because um, I spend my money on that. Like, so if I, if I'm a really stressing in a situation, and I'm uh, if you've, uh, if I'm thinking about drugs in the littlest way, I I'll buy a record instead. So awesome. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I'm. I don't have a vinyl play, player, you know. Quite, quite frankly, I'm not listening that much to music that oh, much yeah? anymore. No, it's, it's I don't know. Yeah, I think it's uh, development of your brain and everything. So most people are like ending up with uh, with the music taste they had from like sixteen to twenty five a little bit. Yeah, that's true. Like a lot of people don't find new music once they hit twenty five. Brain, st brain stops, you know. Yeah. Uh, growing when you're 20, around 25 so you know you're stuck a little bit there you know yeah i i get that um i'm happy that i do get to listen to new music though and everything uh, i've got some years that i've got to make up for so hey, what's the uh, what was your favorite uh, record of 2020 or something of like new ones like uh, that i've gotten i don't know um what's tough i got a lot but i got a lot of old ones too right they're not necessarily from from 2020 mm -hmm. um I'll go, I'll go 2019. I really like the uh, the last uh, Allegion album. Uh, Allegion, it's like um, uh, death metal with like a hint of classical in there, and uh, they're on Metal Blade Records. Uh, okay. I interviewed Greg Burgess. That was that was awesome. And um, I also really like the the last Cattle Decapitation album. But still, that's like that's like 2019. 2020, I I, I can't really tell you. But as far as far as black metal goes, I just uh, ordered um, the new um, the the new album and the previous one by Mork. Okay, yeah, the Norwegian one. Yeah, yeah, more yeah. Uh, like I, I, oh, that, yeah. uh, also, that actually li listened to it uh, a little bit on the net too. Now that it's like old old kind of feeling yeah, with that. It, I, feel like, I, I like uh, I like that band a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like it feels like older black metal, but like still really catchy at some points, and like I, I I really enjoyed it. I stumbled across them on YouTube, and then I just went I went to their uh, Facebook page and ended up ordering a couple albums directly from them because I was like this this is awesome, and uh, yeah, now I got to figure out how I'm going to pay for it. But that's that's a story for another day. That's true. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a good band. I think that I think actually that vocalist there uh, has a podcast or something I've seen. I think I think he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, uh, so he's uh, in, into spreading the the Bible of metal, metal Bible or something. Well, that's the... gospel of I don't fucking know something yeah. metal. Yeah. yeah, something. So if uh, you're listening to this, you want to go check out the Mork guys' podcast. Do that. What, what did you say now? Uh, I, was, I, was, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the hypothetical people right now. I was just telling them to go check out the Mork podcast. Yeah. <laughs> the, I don't know the, people too. Yeah, the hypothetical people. Like I, yeah. I like these hypothetical people better than the shadow people. Yeah. The shadow people is a little bit better than the imaginary people. Huh? Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> oh, well. Oh, it was great talking to you, King. Uh, thank you for being on Metal Health Round Two. Uh, is there anything well, else you better? want to say? Are you, more, are you happier now? Was this a good, better, better uh, interview? Do you think? I think on my behalf, I'm gonna have to do some editing and stuff. But like, um, mm -hmm. I think it's just because I wasn't, I wasn't as prepared as I probably could have been too. But I just wanted I'm, to prove uh, that I'm, I'm, very, I'm rusty too. So yeah, right. So the the ebb and flow and the the riffing with each other. Probably could have been a bit better, but uh, it's okay. Maybe I have something to do do with it as well. Maybe I'm interrupting you in the wrong places. So well, it's, like the it, is going. It, it's also because um, uh, you're you're in Norway. I'm in Canada. Where like we're going over the internet with this right now. So there's also like that little bit of lag too, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Right. Yeah, we'll just blame it on that, right? We're, we're fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll put on a little bit extra like for you there. <laughs> uh, all right. Thanks, King, for being on Mel Health. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is the perfect analogy for mental health. All right. Boom. I fall. And then, like, the jogger comes up. Oh, oh, that happened. That happened right in front of me. Do I have to care? Looks around. Looks around. Do I have to care? Oh, there's no one around. Okay, I'll just keep going.